Amen. We will now have our official opening prayer by Brother Michael Anderson. Brother Michael Anderson. Amen. 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 Uh, before, one second, I'm sorry. Before we do go into the opening prayer, we are going to do a communion and a brief offering service. So we would just say if you need to take communion, please, as the ushers come up, make sure to put your hand up to indicate to them that you do need communion this afternoon. Amen? Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great. our heads. Father, we come to you today. Thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us in this side of glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the great man of God that we had no fear of be elevated in your name, Jesus. Yes. Let us all come together and just let the message come and just fall on open ears, open minds, open hearts, Lord. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, Anybody remember where Just As I Am is? We know it, but we don't know where it is. Let's go to, uh, let's go to hymn number 311. Number 311. In Gethsemane. That's what's good. It's always good to have a young brother that can help you out. Amen. Well, go to 310, I'm sorry. 310. Mm -hmm. On a hillside so lonely, he left Jesus one day. So wounded and weary, he went there to pray. My friends there forsaken, so lonely was he to have of the Lord that which also deliver unto you that the Lord did the same night in which Bertray took bread. When we have given things he break and said, Take eat this my body which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. Now ask Brother Robinson to bear the body. That's right. Yeah, we Father, come here and pray to thank you for the blessing that for this day. We ask that you bless over the bread that brought the teaching of your body. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And after the same manner, you also took a cup of something saying, This cup of New Testament in my blood. Did this eat as often as you drink it and remember to me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do so the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty in the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthy, eats and drinks in that vacant pool itself, not concern the Lord's body. But it's caused me and weak and sick and money and many sleep. Now I ask Brother Robinson to pray over them through the mind. That's right. 
Yeah, we follow the tongue really pray. Thank you for blessing us for this day. We ask that you bless us with the food and the wine, with the representation of the blood spilled, the representation of our sins. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, this concludes the um, communion portion of the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Is out also given to the church order to the church of Galatians, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let me when you lay by him in store, that God has brought for him, that they may go no gather from my cup. And I also read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 7, and give us instruction on how we should give. And that reads, For this I say, he who sworn sparingly to reap also sparingly, he who sworn bountifully to reap also bountifully. Let every man according to the purpose of his heart so love give not grudgingly or necessity, but God love the cheerful giver. Now, now let me give and let you give cheerfully. Well, I'm a hard fighting soul. You know we're all on the battlefield. I am a hard fighting soul.
invite me to look. Now, ask Brother Robinson to pray over the offering. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and spread. Thank you for blessing us for this day. We ask that everyone give us according to their heart and we ask that you bless over the offering that we use it and the worthy of your sight. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Next, we're going to have a uh, solo selection. By our own sister Rhonda Hubley. Amen. Amen. Come on up. Bless us. Grace us. With a song this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
Good afternoon. If you're physically able to please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. I'm reading from uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 11 through 13 from the King James Bible. This is the word of the Lord. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers yeah. for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, yeah. for the edifying of the body of Christ, yes. till we all come to the unity yeah. of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Yeah. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. To a perfect man, mm -hmm. to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Yeah. Yes. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Uh, uh, Gracious and merciful God, our Father in heaven, we come, Lord. Just thank you for another day. Yes. Thank you for another opportunity to worship you. Yes. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for pulling us together, Lord, for this magnificent moment of the uh, ordination of these two wonderful men. Yes. Two good leaders, Lord. We thank you for them for putting them in our lives. They've touched many lives in this room, I'm sure. We ask, oh God, that as we continue in this service, Lord, that you would bless everybody that's in here. Keep us, Lord, in the unity, coming together, oh God. Help us, Lord, to understand what you're trying to do with us, for us, and even through us. Yes. We love you. We honor you, Father God. We adore your precious holy name. Yes. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, for our sins. Yes. And we ask that you would forgive us of any sins that yes. we've committed in thought, word, and deed. Yes. Yes. We just ask, oh Lord, that you continue to love us and bless us and keep us. In this magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Yes. Let the church say amen. Amen. Number 668. Numbers 1, 3, and 8. There is behind the edge of blue a God concealed from human sight. He tipped his God with heavenly gear and framed the world in his great mind. There is a God. Oh, no. 
eldership in the church. I'm not going to drive you crazy with all that. Y'all probably know that. That's why they're here. Amen. But y'all figured they met the qualification. What does they look good? <laughs> what just because they got pretty wives? <laughs> Amen. Help me it does help. Amen. When you can't get in that door, you just stick the sister out in front. Hey, how you doing? And you stand right behind and say, yeah, I'm in the church of Christ. I need somebody. Uh, but I wanted to talk about, just for a moment, about some practical applications about what this position entails. Elders are like thermostats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Controlling the temperature, yeah. the climate, the comfort level of the congregation. Yes. Yes. We're big brothers and fathers and grandfathers to many. Amen. We can be the teacher and the principal. Amen. We can be the good cop and what? the bad cop. We can educate, encourage, and admonish, and sometimes all at the same time. Amen. But here's something I'll never forget that was told to me. And I didn't understand the meaning behind it until much later. And it was told to me by Brother Lord at my head, I will show. He said, as he pointed to the congregation in East Baltimore, he said, these are good people. <laughs> now, what did he mean by that? He was saying to me, and I had to find this out later, these are people who are just trying to get to heaven. Amen. And sometimes they may lead a little help navigating that path yes, come on. along the way. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, you like myself, you may not understand that so by and by. Amen. You might understand it now because Brother Lord has done this before. Amen. But I never forgot that, brother. And I want to thank you for that. Amen. Like lighthouses, we operate best in the fall. Amen. Come on now. Feed, oversee, and guard. So we operate best in the fall. We feed. Let me get back over here because y'all don't think I'm going to quit, so I'm, I'm going to just stop right here. <laughs> but you know, when you feed and fold, you got to remember we're like dietitians too. Every member of the congregation has a diet. But not everybody eats the same food. But we got to feed them right. Amen, somebody. Some folk need some milk, some folk need some meat. We got to know the congregation's diet. But we also got to know their digestion, right? Uh, amen. Help me, somebody. Sometimes you, I said I was going to feed. But sometimes when you're feeding somebody, there might not be the right food. They don't, you don't know how they can digest it. As elders, we got to know how folks can digest what you're feeding them. Help me, somebody. And then you got to understand their disposition. You know how some of us get after a real good meal? <laughs> Get lazy. We got to control the disposition as well. Because as you're feeding folk, as they're digesting what you're feeding them, their disposition can change. You want to help them to grow. You want to help to nourish them. But you got to watch their diet as well. Make sure that they don't try to feed themselves on some stuff that they might not have the diet for or the digestion for or the disposition for. So we work best in the fall. Just remember, we feed, we oversee, and we guard. And if you do that, God will keep both you and the flock. Amen. Congratulations to both of you. I love you. Love you both, love your wives. And we are just so thankful for this work that you've taken on. We appreciate you. God bless you. And got here. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother Bill. Oftentimes, when I hear the name Bill, come on, come on, come on. I look because my name is Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Right close. Yeah. The veal. But 
That's a great similarity to have. That's a great similarity to have. He's a man of God, one that I admire, one that I've grown to know and I've grown to become very close with in the body of Christ. As well as uh, Minister Eric Bowen and Minister Whitfield. <clears throat> Just a brief history lesson, if you will. Um, I got my start at East Baltimore Church of Christ. Amen. And we were all there. We, I was taught there, groomed there under uh, Brother Thea and Brother Grant and some other fine brothers, many of whom are in this room right now. Amen. But the Lord blessed us to come to this work, to work in this area of Baltimore City. Amen. And I began to work alongside brother and sister Lord, whom I had watched since my inception at East Baltimore. What a fine example of, first of all, husband and wife team. Yes. You, they always have one another's back. They always have one another's back. If I haven't learned anything from them, it's always support one another and let nothing come between you and you. I met brother and sister Whitfield a couple of years ago. And I may have seen Brother Whitfield around the brother's brotherhood. I've never, I hadn't been exposed to his preaching, but we quickly became great acquaintances. He and my wife and his wife and went out to dinner and had fellowship one with another. See, in the body of Christ, you have to get in leadership. You have, the scripture says to know those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord. You have to first have relationship. See, a preacher once told me, he said, what do you call two fellows in a boat rowing in the same direction? Yeah. Fellowship. Yeah. Amen. Right. So we have to go in the same direction. Amen. Fellowship. And so we have to spend time one with another. That's right. How do I know that brother... Matthias, middle name, I can give you up. But if you give me a G, we spend time one with another. Uh, Rodney, that's you. We spend time with one another. We have relationships. And so, as you embark upon this new leadership role, again for you, Eric, and Brother Whitfield. Yes, sir. Our challenge is to support you. Amen. Amen. Respect you and love you as you love the Lord. Amen. If you love God, the people will love you. Amen. And if you teach them how to love God, they'll teach you how to love them. Amen. So that's all I have. I love and support this work because it's the right thing to do. It's not about what's right, and it's not about who's right. It's about it's the right thing to do. And we all are here so that God might receive honor and glory. That's the bottom line. When in doubt, check the book. And if he's not coming from the book, then don't follow him. Follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. I was truly, truly honored. Okay, I'll do it this way. I was truly, truly honored when, uh, when my good friend, Brother Lark, asked if I would sing. I reminded him that I don't do that no more. <laughs> but for him, I'll do anything. As Brother Beal said, Brother, I'm sorry, Brother Beal got the names from him, uh, said that he and Brother Laura were classmates. Me and Brother Donnie, uh, Brother Whitfield, I'm sorry, Donnie's an elder, I can't use that first name. <laughs> uh, me and Brother Whitfield were classmates. Uh, MBBIC done grown a whole lot of preachers out of here. 
seeking our highest good. Amen. Paul tells us that friends honor each other above themselves. That's right. John writes that friends love each other the same way Christ loved us. That's right. That's good. Someone once said in scripture that friends challenge each other to meet their highest, their highest good. Yes. But the Lord has always challenged me. Uh, he's always given me great advice. He's always been there for me. Brother Whitfield has always answered the call. He's always given great advice. He's always seeked, sought my highest good. That's how I know in the past we've been friends and in the future we'll remain friends. Yeah. In the city, y'all have two great men that are willing to serve with you and serve for you. And I just want to tell you that you couldn't do any better than a selection here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, what you do is not good. Yes, 
That's right. For Moses came from a moralistic leadership. He grew up under Pharaoh's leadership, yes. where one man did everything. Yes. And so what Jephro said, well, what you're doing is not good. Uh, you will waste away, and the people will go back frustrated. Uh -huh. So then, the word came. God will bless you if you put over a men of a hundred thousand hundred tents. And this was the beginning of laying down leadership. So then, they will bear the burden with you. To my brothers, to all elders, your work is not to lead. Your work is to help manage and bear the burden with the preacher. Bear the burden, cause sometimes Come on, get it. Sometimes they don't want to make you cry. Sometimes it'll make you holler, Lord, have mercy. But if you got some men you can lean on, can I lean on you, my brother? Come on, brother. Yeah. yeah. 